Okay, in this video we're going to talk about uh, mixers and uh, do a little bit of a demonstration and talk about uh, some of the properties of mixers and uh, how they're used in circuits such as like a radio receiver. So what a mixer is, um, is a device that will take two input signals, typically a local oscillator signal and uh, some RF signal and combine them and produce another output signal often called an intermediate frequency or IF signal. Uh, in a receiver application it's typically what they'd be called. But the idea really is that the mixer itself really combines those two signals at, using some kind of nonlinear device or nonlinear operation. And it could be every, anything from diodes to transistors to uh, JFETs or MOSFETs to more complex circuits like a Gilbert cell multiplier, that kind of a thing. But the whole key is that it's some nonlinear operation. Because if you take essentially two sinusoids and you combine them in some nonlinear fashion, you're going to create uh, a new signal at the output that, res that has a number of intermodulation uh, components or products in it. So um, the way to think about that is, let's say we put a sinusoid in in the yellow and a sinusoid in to the input, what will be present at the output? The output frequencies are really going to be, it's going to be a whole series of different frequencies. Uh, you may get you know, a copy of the input signal and the output signal, but you'll also get some indifference products of integer multiples of the frequencies of the two input signals. So for example, you know, the first order products will be uh, just the input, uh, input frequency and the yellow frequency. You'll also get second order products, which will be the difference between the two input uh, frequencies and sometimes it'll be either the LO minus the input or the input minus the LO depending on which one is higher. Okay, You also get the sum of those two. Those are called second order products. Then uh, the third order products will be, you know, say 2 F, you know, times the LO minus the FN or 2 times the LO plus FN, etc. And it goes etc. on and on for various values of M and N. Just different integer values of the input frequency and the LO frequency. Okay, uh, and now a lot, oftentimes uh, there'll be mixers that are called balanced mixers, and the, the whole idea with a balanced mixer is to uh, minimize the feed through of these two components into the output. So a single balanced mixer will essentially eliminate or null one of them, a doubly balanced mixer will uh, nullify or minimize two of them. So that's what's meant by a, a balanced or double balanced mixer is that the input frequencies are suppressed and you'll get the second, third, and higher order products. In most cases, the second order products uh, are typically the ones that are used because they're the ones that are you know, rel relatively you know, close in frequency to what we're dealing with. Uh, it's just also kind of you know, just, just what is typically used. Uh, so most often will be the difference product that's used. So it'll be either LO frequency minus FN or FN minus LO. So let's look at how this applies in a receiver application. Okay, so here's a typical receiver structure. You have a an antenna here. Maybe you might have some bandpass filtering that gets switched in. That RF signal that comes in here basically contains signals that all, you know all over you know maybe a given frequency band that you might be looking at. Okay, when you tune the knob, the the you know spin the dial to uh, to tune the radio like the tuning knob on a radio you're typically adjusting the frequency of a variable frequency oscillator, or VFO, to adjust the frequency of an LO. So as you adjust the frequency of the LO, what that's going to do is to take different signals at different frequencies that are appearing at the RF input and make them appear at a desired IF output, where you might have a narrow IF filter. So the, really another way to look at it is that Say at the RF input, I've got signals across the band. Say this is a frequency spread across here. I've got many signals sitting across that band. As we dial the that LO frequency back and forth, what we'll do is select one of those and translate it, frequency translate it to be at the IF frequency. Okay, because the IF would typically only be wide enough to pass one signal. So uh, the whole and the, the idea with this is that you can concentrate your design energy and, and making a nice uh, you know, tight filter here to just pass the signals you want, do all your amplification, automatic gain control, all at one design frequency called the IF frequency or intermediate frequency. Okay, and just, let, uh, and just basically place the signal of interest into the IF by adjusting the VFO. So that's really how the, the mixer is essentially used. 
Um, and again, most often you will find that uh, the IF frequency is the difference between the desired RF signal and the LO, and it's either one or the other. And then if the, the IF filter's job is to select just the desired product that you want. Now one interesting thing is that if the LO frequency is higher than the frequency you're listening, you're going to listen to, you get something called spectral inversion. Uh, the signal essentially folds its way or folds around uh, the LO. Uh, so if you if the input frequency was a you know, lower sideband signal, when if you translate it this way, it would become an upper sideband signal. Most receivers are designed such that you know if that happens, it's kind of invisible to you, but that's essentially what can happen. Uh, if the LO is higher than uh, the RF signal itself. Okay, so uh, to kind of illustrate some of this, I set up uh, this little circuit board here. This has got a, a, a very typical uh, NE602A um, mixer on it. It's actually a mixer and a VCO combined, but uh, I'm not using the VCO in there. I'm basically just using this uh, NE602 in this way. So just a, a simple uh, uh, impedance matching transformer to take an input signal, an RF signal, uh, and then also a, a, a local oscillator signal coming in uh, and driving into what would normally be you know, part of the oscillator circuit, but I'm just not using the oscillator. I want to control it more precisely with my own external signal generator, and then taking the output through another uh, uh, you know, coupling transformer. Uh, basically what I've got set up here on the bench is I've got a, an RF signal source generating my, R, you know, my RF signal at about minus 30 dBm going into the RF input and I've got my local oscillator at about 0 dBm going in you know, to the LO input here and then the IF output okay, from the mixer which is right here is going into a splitter which is going into the spectrum analyzer and into a receiver to kind of simulate the IF chain of a receiver so you can see what's going on and then the scope is a, a mixed domain oscilloscope. So I'm, what I'm doing is I'm looking at the, all the signals on either side in the time domain. So I'll be able to see the RF signal. Um, actually, this is the output signal. I'll see the uh, LO signal and the RF signal all on the screen. And then also look at the spectrum of the output to kind of see what it looks like. So that's what we've got set up here on the bench. Um, so the board is uh, sitting right here. There's my LO signal coming in right here. And then uh, this is the RF input, and then that's the output back there. And these are the uh, IF transformers. Now, uh, and that, that, that's the uh, NE602A. So this signal generator back here is generating my LO. If we look, we can see that LO is at 17.7 uh, megahertz. Okay. And then the RF signal is being generated up here. Okay. You can see that's at 28.4 megahertz at minus 30 dBm output. So if we take a look on the screen on the scope, uh, we can see uh, channel 2 here, uh, this is, uh, let's see, channel 2 is my LO signal, okay, that's the, this, this one here at the top, okay, that's channel 2, so that's my local oscillator signal. Channel 3 is my RF signal, okay, it's just an unmodulated uh, signal at uh, 28.4 megahertz right now. And then uh, channel 1, this yellow trace, is the output of the mixer. And really what that is, again, th th this particular uh, mixer that's in here is a Gilbert cell multiplier. So in a sense it's really just the product of these two signals being multiplied against each other and this is what you get. So it's a pretty complex looking signal uh, and the reason it's complex is it's rich with all of these harmonics that we have talked about, all of these frequency components that we kind of listed here. Okay. In fact we can actually see them. If we look on the spectrum analyzer here uh, we can see the spectrum of that signal has got a lot of components in it. And if we look carefully Remember we said in this case the local oscillator is 17.7 megahertz. So if we take a look, uh, there's my 17.7 megahertz component. We can kind of see the marker right here, say 17.7 megahertz. Okay, that's that signal right there. Okay, the RF signal is at uh, 28.4, so that's that guy right there. Okay, so the difference between those two is 10.7 megahertz. Okay, this, this is going to be my desired RF, uh, IF signal. Okay, but I've got other components in here too. I've got seven megahertz. The seven megahertz signal is actually two times the local oscillator minus the RF frequency. We could also see, okay, my IF, I can see my 17.7 megahertz signal. Uh, I've got this one here at 24.7. Okay, that 24.7 is actually three times the LO minus RF. 
Then there's my 28.4, that's my RF input signal. I've got another one here, this one's at uh, 35.4. That's actually just two times the LO signal. And I've got another one way out over here, that 46.1, that's the sum of the RF and the LO signals. So I can see all those signals in there. Now the whole idea is, is that all we really care about in this case is the difference signal or this one here at 10.7 megahertz. In fact if we take a look at uh, the receiver here, the receiver is dialed up at 10.7 megahertz and if we look at the signal strength meter you can actually see I've got a, you know, a, a strong signal sitting there. In fact uh, I'm going to turn a little bit of uh, amplitude modulation on on this signal so I'll just turn the, the AM on here. Now you can probably hear that 500 hertz tone kind of see it's a little wiggling here because I'm doing an amplitude modulation of that signal but now I can hear it uh, in the receiver okay so now I know I've actually got that selected in there let me turn that modulation off so I don't have to listen to that okay so um, if we tune uh, the local oscillator frequency around okay so I can go over here and I'll just uh, I'll just go start tuning this around here and uh, watch what happens on the spectrum. So if I start bringing the local oscillator up, watch that signal at uh, 10.7 megahertz. It's no longer at 10.7 megahertz, it's moving. Okay, so my, I'm, as I'm tuning around, I'm actually selecting what this is. Remember, this signal that is at 10.7, that's 10.7 uh, right there. That signal is really just my 28.4 megahertz signal that's coming out of the signal generator bringing frequency translated down by the LO and landing here. But if I change the LO, if I move this guy around, that signal, the original 28 megahertz signal, is not going to be landing in the local oscillator anymore. Okay, so I can see I can move it up or I can move it down by changing that frequency. Okay. So what's interesting is uh, we talked about the, the fact that we can use you know, the, the, the difference in either way. So that gives rise to something called, you know, having an image response, okay? So while we're looking at this particular signal now at uh, 28 megahertz, okay? So the 28 megahertz happens to be, you know, uh, 10.7 megahertz above my LO. Well, what if I put in an RF signal that was uh, below the LO by the same amount, okay? So if I took, uh, you know, for example, my, my LO is 17.7 megahertz, uh, my, IF, my IF is at 10.7. The difference between those two is 7 megahertz. Okay, so if I dial in, say, a 7 megahertz uh, signal here, okay, and we'll notice I still have a signal on my receiver. Okay, I still have a component now at uh, 10.7 megahertz because now my LO is 17.7, my RF is 7. Okay. And so 17.7 minus 7 is 10.7. So I'm still getting that signal. So this particular, you know, model that I've got, you know, here now would put a signal into this IF. Uh, say if I had this dialed to 17.7 megahertz, a signal at 28.4 megahertz will land here, as well as a signal that's at 7 megahertz will land here. So that's the reason you might need some bandpass filtering or things like that. Okay, because there's no way to really separate those two. The IF has, you know, knows no difference between them. So that all that, those kinds of decisions and things like that, all, you know, are things you'll take into account when you're designing a receiver in terms of picking what your IF is going to be, what your LO is going to be, whether you're going to need some bandpass filtering, and those kinds of things. Okay, so we can see we've got a number of components here, you know, as well. Uh, in this case, where we're looking at a, a seven megahertz input signal. So I've got my 10.7 megahertz IF, I've got my 17 megahertz or 17.7 megahertz LO. I've got a component there at uh, 24.7. The 24.7 is the LO plus the RF, right? So 17.7 uh, meg plus seven. Then I've got uh, the next component that I see is uh, 28.4. That one is two times the LO minus RF. And then I've got 31.7. That 31.7 is two times RF plus LO. And then I've got uh, a 35.4, that's twice the yellow. And then I've got a 46.1 over there at the end. Okay, and that's three times the yellow minus RF. Okay, so we have all these various components in here. So, um, and again, what we mentioned is that uh, the job in the receiver is this IF filter is designed to essentially get rid of all the components except the one we want. Okay, remember the one we want in this case is just the 10.7 megahertz signal. Uh, on this board, 
uh, kind of buried way over here on the output. This guy is a little uh, three pin ceramic 10.7 megahertz filter that I yanked out of an old uh, cordless phone. And I've, I've got this thing jumpered across right now, so that's why we're seeing all of these components uh, coming out of the mixer. But if I just lift that jumper off, I'll do that right now, watch the spectrum, and essentially all we're going to have left on that spectrum, if I yank this thing off here, now all I have left is just that 10.7 megahertz signal. All those other components were suppressed by that, uh, that filter. And that's typically the job that the IF filter will do uh, when you're uh, you know, designing a receiver is just select that particular you know, difference component that you're looking for uh, when tuning the receiver. So anyway, I hope this uh, shed a little light on uh, how mixers behave and uh, the kind of com frequency components that they generate and, uh, and how they'd be used in a receiver, for example, to uh, tune in a particular frequency and how that puts that the desired signal into an IF so you can filter it, go demodulate it, go listen to it. So uh, anyway, just an introduction, uh, not uh, to get too deep into mixer design, but just to tell you how they work. I hope this uh, gave you a little bit of understanding there. And thanks again for watching.